Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be discussing or talking about a new 360 camera from Ricoh, the Ricoh Theta Z1. So right up front I'm going to say I do not have the camera, I have not used it. I'm just going to be talking about the specs, what it is, what it can do, why it's different, why it's special, etc. I'm going to show you just what it looks like. So the Theta Z1 is going to cost $999 which is a lot of money. I mean, I don't care where you're from, that's a lot of money. So how does it justify this price? I mean, what's so special about it? So the main selling point of this camera or its unique feature, the best feature about it, is the fact that it uses one inch sensors. Now that may not mean anything to you if you are not into photography, cameras, uh, etc. If you are, you probably know what that means. But essentially what it means is that the sensors are a lot larger than basically all the other 360 cameras that are out right now under a thousand dollars, even slightly over, some over a thousand dollars don't have one inch sensors. So these lenses will be able to take in a lot more light and will be able to produce a much more detailed image, which should look a lot better, the dynamic range should be good, and yeah, it should be able to shoot a lot better in low light than basically any other 360 camera. They all struggle to shoot well in low light, mostly because of the limitations of their sensors. So just to make the point clear, this is the Ricoh Theta V, which is Ricoh's other kind of 360 camera, and the sensors in the Ricoh Theta Z one will be roughly four times larger than the sensors in here. And the same with basically every other 360 camera, they all basically use the same kind of small sensor size. So these one inch sensors will be about four times larger than pretty much any other camera out there. So essentially the lenses in this new camera, the Z1, are much closer to what you would expect to see in a DSLR or a mirrorless camera. Um, compared to what we've seen in 360 cameras so far, the lenses are lo a lot more advanced and a lot more high quality, and they should therefore be able to produce much better quality images. So I'm not going to say that this is like an amazing camera or anything, I'm just trying to tell you the specs. I mean, there's literally hardly any thing out there to do with this, they just release the specs. So I've been kind of searching the internet for any kind of example, photos, videos, shop with this camera, but as it's literally just been announced today, there doesn't seem to be anything out there. I have found something on this Japanese version of Engadget, which does uh, talk about the camera, and apparently there was kind of a preview thing, um, they showed some images from the shop with the camera and people were saying that it was good, uh, it was that the dynamic range had been greatly improved and um, there was little cr chromatic aberration which was a issue with the last camera, you know this purpleness that you can find on the edges, yeah apparently that's been improved a lot. So I mean yeah there's these images, there's this unstitched image here which seems to be on like, uh, is that Lightroom or Photoshop? And I'm pretty sure that that is London that is there, that he's shot that kind of circular image. Yes, that is London. Rico, if you have one of these cameras in London, you need to give it to your boy here and I'm gonna go test it. So give me the camera, I'll shoot all your photos for you. I know all the best places in London that people wanna see how good it is. I'll wait for your call. Actually, I have just found another article. It's also in Japanese, but we can translate it. And they do show one image. Yeah, they've sh they show one image shot with the Z1 apparently. Um, again, this is London. Give me the camera. Uh, yeah, that's the shard right there. Yeah, I mean, it looks like a good image. Obviously, it's not going to be in its highest quality because this is just posted online. It's probably cropped. I mean, it's probably zoomed in. But to be honest, even with this photo, reasonably low light, it looks like to be in dusk. I mean, one of the street lamps is on um, and it looks pretty good. I mean, this lighting is really nice on the on the river and the sky looks good. I mean, yeah, I mean, this is not the best example. This is just literally the only thing I found. But it is a good sign. I mean, it looks, I'm not gonna say whether it's amazing or great, because we just don't know. Uh, it's too early to tell. So actually, I just finished recording the video that you're watching now, and I checked this website again, this Japanese website, and I found a whole host of other images shot with the Theta Z1. And so we're gonna go through them, we're gonna have a look. I wanna look at this one in particular right now. This apparently shot in a starry sky and uh, in the middle of the night. Um, if this is actually shot with the Theta Z1 and it's, uh, yeah, like, at real, I mean, that's really amazing. I have no of zero 360 cameras that can shoot in the middle of the night and capture a starry sky like this. I mean, that is really good. Well, it says here, photographed by Mr. Kanji Tania, photography shot the starry sky, star, starry sky at 360 degrees on Salt Lake, Bolivia. I mean, I'm assuming that this, this is the article about the Z1, so I'm assuming this was shot with the Z1, and that is a really cool image, and if that is accurate, then this is gonna be an epic camera for shooting at low light. I guess here is another image, um, again, shot 
in a low light example at dusk I think they're really trying to show that this camera works well in a low light situation whereas basically no other 360 cameras do work that well in low light downtown areas at dusk we can clearly illuminate the light and the dark places of the bright city which is true I mean the windows the light areas of windows are very different from the dark it doesn't look blurred it doesn't look overexposed there's a bit of blurriness in the people here but they're moving so we can forgive that like I don't know what you think guys you tell me let me know what you think I think these are looking really good for low light photography in 360 okay here it is compared to the Theta V as you can see the lens is a lot bigger and a lot more round which is fine because it's the, the sensors are four times bigger or something so yeah I mean it is a slightly bigger camera but it's still you know relatively uh relatively small let's go I will link to this article and you'll be able to see all these for yourself what the hell is that? I think this is like a technical drawing of how the lenses work. I have no idea what that means. Maybe you do. Maybe that means something to you, but it still looks quite cool. Whatever. Ah, and here is the comparison of the sensor sizes, guys. This is important. I mean, this is what the um, one uh, over 2.3 inch lens is what the kind of Theta V uses. Uh, and most other 360 cameras like the Rylo, uh, Insta 361, GoPro Fusion, they all use these small small little lenses but this one one inch lens as you can see is around about i guess maybe three or four times bigger what else have we got okay mock up of the lens see that this is what the lens looks like okay okay and i think the rest of the uh the image is just gonna be images of the camera itself you can close up with the lens there yeah all the other camera all the other images were just of the the camera itself there's no other example images but those ones that i've shown you that one at night that one with the stars I don't, I mean, I struggle to get that, well, I don't, I mean, I live in London, I never see the stars, but I don't know of any 360 camera that would be able to do that, or even, like, a phone camera would struggle to do that, and some DSLRs would struggle to capture lights like that and those stars, even if it's a perfectly, like, clear night. Yeah, so if that's accurate, then that's pretty exciting, especially for, I guess, more professional use. Um, wow, yeah. Now I'm a little bit excited about it. I wasn't, to be honest, before. I was a bit like, oh, $999, what's what's new? I mean, big sensor, so what? But yeah, that looks really good. Um, so a little bit more excited about the Theta Z1 now. And now I really want to try it. It's in London, give it to me. You can also live stream in 4K, which is good. Um, obviously not, again, amazing, like amazingly new. Plenty of other cameras can do that, but something nice to have if you're into the live stream game. There seems to be a, like a display panel, which was something missing from the other camera, which was sorely needed. I do not like cameras that don't have anything displayed because it means you can't really use it manually. You need to connect it to an app and I don't like doing that all the time. The one annoying thing that they haven't changed is that there's still only 19 gigabytes of internal memory. <laughs> I mean, come on, it's 2019. Just put a micro SD card slot in your camera. It's really, can't be that difficult. I guess it's fine if you're shooting photos, like which is clearly what this camera is for. But if you're gonna shoot videos and you can be out all day shooting videos, then 19, gigabyte, 19 gigabytes is not enough, I'm afraid. Anyway, yeah, so that's a bummer. Now compared to the Theta V, which could shoot, I think 15 megapixel photos, the Ricoh Theta Z1 will be able to shoot 23 megapixel photos, which is an upgrade. It's not huge. It's not an absolutely biblical uh, number, m number of pixels, but you have to remember that it's not all about the pixels. It's all about how they are captured. They, These are brand new lenses and they will also have variable apertures. So you will be able to change the aperture of the lenses depending on the situation you want to shoot. And that's also not been possible with the other kind of consumer 360 cameras out right now. This, that's definitely a new feature. You will also be able to capture it in raw quality. So DNG raw, which will give you a lot more, uh, I guess, access to the quality, let you edit it a lot more free and to keep as much quality as possible. You'll also be able to link it directly with Adobe Lightroom CC. Yeah, this seems to be a camera directly kind of aimed at photography more than video. This new camera will be able to shoot video, but at 4K resolution. So really not mind blowing, to be honest. A new camera in 2019, I would have expected it to be better than that. I would have expected 5K if they were really going for the video market, but clearly they're probably not. It's probably an afterthought. However, saying that, Again, not all to do with resolution. If these lenses are as good as I guess the specs suggest, then that 4K video will look a lot better than any other camera shooting 4K and perhaps even shooting 5K because if the lights, the back of the color, the color balance, the quality of each pixel is 10 times better, then it's gonna look better no matter the resolution. Uh, yeah, so I mean, that, that's basically it, guys. Uh, that's the Ricoh Theta Z1. I can't really make any conclusions based on just some pictures and these specifications because 
Who knows, could be just awful. We don't know until we try it. However, this camera does seem to be aimed at a more professional market, which will have the budget to uh, pay for that. I mean, there is a gap in the market where a lot of professionals, and I don't, by professionals, I don't mean professional VR photographers, because they'll still be using DSLRs. Um, this won't, this won't beat that. But I'm talking about things like real estate agents, architects, surveyors, um, builders. I get lots of people emailing me asking me what the best 360 camera for like those professions are, because they really want to use spherical images and VR images in their workplace, but there isn't a really good enough camera that's cheap enough and easy enough to use. So for example, this doesn't really shoot good enough quality for professional use like those professions but it is really easy to use. However, the ones that do shoot really good images, like the Z cams, the um, Insta360 Pros, all those kind of cameras, they're too complicated to use or too expensive. I think this is trying to hit that middle range where it's an easy to use camera, but shoots very high quality photos where you can get a lot of detail. So I guess the Z1 is aimed at people who are gonna try and make money out of their camera, not just play around with it and take it on holiday. Uh, it's definitely aimed at a semi-professional market. Um, so yeah, I think, Considering that, it could be good enough. We'll have to see what the quality is like. And obviously I will get the camera and I will use it and I will test it out and let you guys see what it's like and see if it lives up to the hype of these amazing new lenses. Um, yeah, we'll see. Like I said, Rico, it's in London. Let me use it and I will show the people what how good your new camera is. Or are you scared? Hmm. We'll see. Uh, yeah, uh, until then guys, I hope you have enjoyed this video. I have a VR tour coming up. I created a new one of Prague this time, Prague Castle, one of the most amazing cities I've ever been to. So if you have a Oculus Go, I'm gonna be uploading this 360 um, VR tour of Prague very soon. Uh, check that out. But until next time, this is the Rico Theta Z1. So if you wanna see all of the specs from this camera, check out my website in the link below. I will post a full table of the specs there and all the other information that I can find on this camera. And yeah, I will try and get it and use it and get back to you on that. But until next time, see you around, bye.